In this series, over 36 hours, I went on a trip to four hidden gems of California. First, the Algodonas Dunes, the first sand dunes I have visited in five years. Second, the center of the world, featuring the Museum of History in granite. Third, Anza Borrego State Park, featuring slot canyons and desert art. And finally, the Salton Sea, a desert curiosity featuring offbeat desert artworks. Since 1952, the date of its official designation, Anza Borrego Desert State Park has been a special place for lovers of the desert and lovers of the night sky. These are images that inspired photographers have captured of our galaxy through the magical craft of astrophotography. Join me to learn and experience the wonders of Anza Borrego. And these deaded sculptures have inspired me to make these monster movie sequences. Anza Borrego Desert State Park encompasses over 1,000 square miles, or 640,000 acres. It has over 100 miles of hiking trails and 500 miles of dirt roads. It is the largest state park in California. In comparison, nearby Joshua Tree National Park has about 795,000 acres. Anza Borrego gives Joshua Tree a good run for its money. Anza Borrego is in part named for the Spanish explorer Juan Batista de Anza, and in part for the region's native bighorn sheep. Borrego is the Spanish word for sheep. In 1774, Anza was the first explorer to seek a land route from Mexico to Northern California. He was a captain of the Spanish army and wanted to claim Alta California for Spain. Along the way, he mapped the trail. And then from 1775 to 1776, Anza retraced his route with over 240 settlers and soldiers and nearly 1,000 head of livestock. His group made it north and they settled the port of San Francisco. The establishment of this route is considered one of the key moments in California's history. Anza Borrego is roughly 85 miles from San Diego. 90 miles from Palm Springs and 150 miles from Los Angeles. The park is primarily located in San Diego County, making up one-fifth of the county, and it extends into Imperial County and Riverside County. The slot was my first stop. It is one of the easier destinations to access in the park. But there's still one mile of unpaved road. And it was very windy. Like Antelope Canyon in Arizona, the slot is a slot canyon. By the way, there is a $10 day use fee per vehicle and the slot has a cash-only box. Not having cash, I took my chances, and I lucked out. But I paid my fee later in the day with a card. I actually struggled to find my way in, and I found myself going the wrong way. Eventually, I found myself in the right place. Even though it is considered an easy hike, it is confusing, and I was worried about getting back to my car. I spent over two hours hiking the slot. Also, the overweight man in front of me had trouble squeezing through some of the narrow sections. Some of the native peoples that once inhabited this land include the Cahuilla, the Capeno, and the Kumaye. 
Let's talk about animals. The star of Anza Borrego, as mentioned earlier, is the peninsular bighorn sheep. It has been an endangered species since 1998. There are also mule deer, coyotes, the desert kit fox, bobcats, mountain lions, jackrabbits, cottontails, and squirrels, among other furry varieties. However, the coolest creatures have got to be the scorpions and tarantulas. Specifically, there are desert sand scorpions and giant hairy scorpions. And Anza Borrego scorpions glow in the dark when you shine an ultraviolet light on them. And among tarantulas, the California ebony tarantula is the most common species in Anza Borrego. But wait, according to the internet, Anza Borrego hosts the richest concentration of lizards and snakes in California. Over 50 species, including the horned lizard and rattlesnakes. And Anza Borrego also shows off its wildflowers with the right rains in spring, including the legendary California poppy. And of course, cacti, and there is a palm oasis in the park. It was interesting, but it would have been more beautiful if I did it at sunrise. Then I left, and listened to how shaky the drive was. Then I checked out the visitor center, which is built underground for cooling efficiency. They have exhibits and a gift shop. And when I was there, they gave me a guide to help navigate the Gaeta Meadows and told me about an app that I could download as well. Then I headed to the Gaeta Meadows sculptures. First was the scorpion and the grasshopper. The scorpion was my favorite. It is my favorite. Then I checked out various bighorn sheep sculptures. Maybe my other favorites. I saved the sea serpent dragon for later. There are currently 130, and they are all done by Mexican-American sculptor Ricardo Briseda. And you definitely need a map to get around this place, because it is very spread out and much larger than I expected. Then I went to the Badlands viewpoint off State Route 22. Badlands is a term used to describe land with no apparent use to humans. Land that is eroded, without topsoil and vegetation. Land that cannot be farmed or ranched. But paleontologists can find fossils like a mammoth skull. I find it tempting to compare Anza Borrego's Badlands with South Dakota's Badlands National Park, which is only about 243,000 acres. This was a great spot that I had all to myself, and with the exception of the slot, I had most of the spots to myself, or little company. Before I cover my final stop, I want to share some cool spots that I could not do due to a lack of time and a lack of four-wheel drive, the importance of which cannot be overstated. There is apparently a few miles of soft sand followed by a five-minute walk. Bont's Point is the iconic lookout in Anza Borrego, with postcard perfect views of the Badlands. Then there's Clark Dry Lake, which is comparable to the racetrack in Death Valley. And finally, there is the illegal Goat Canyon Trestle, which is technically not part of the park. It is on private property within the park's boundaries. And one of my favorite YouTube videos featured this place link in description. 
In fact, that particular hike is eight hours one way. That means 16 hours both ways. A crazy all day hike. There are other shorter versions of the hike which require four wheel drive as well. My last stop was the Sea Serpent at sunset. It is 350 feet long and spans both sides of the road. But I still prefer the Scorpion. Its popularity was made apparent by other visitors coming for their photo op. This is an appropriate time to mention that there is ancient Native American rock art in the park, often referred to as pictographs or petroglyphs. After leaving, I would pass through Borrego Springs to get an energy drink. Borrego Springs is a town in the center of the park with a population of about 3,000. It is also California's first international dark sky community, as designated by the International Dark Sky Association. And you can get food and supplies and they have a hotel resort, among other options. And with that, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and spread the magic. Thank you.